So hi, this is Beth and Alvin backstage at Ziggit Festival, uh, about to interview Kevin from Tamer and Parlour. And Kevin from NME is going to join me in the interview, and Chris from Virtual Festivals as well. So um, three-pronged attack, Kevin, I'm afraid. Are you comfortable with this? That's all right. This, this is my first Triforce interview, but uh, I'll, yeah, I'm sure I can cope. Um, OK, so Kevin is going to start from the NME. Cool, man. So uh, how long have you been in uh, Hungary for? Have you managed to see, see much of Ziggit yet? Hungary, we've been here for about seven hours, I think. I don't know, we, our, our bus broke down last night, so we got here sometime in the morning. We just climbed into our hotel. And, uh, yeah, we've been walking around and checking it out, but, yeah, we're not very long. <laughs> it's a beautiful festival, isn't it? You kind of get that sense that there's a lot more going on here than just the music. And... Yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, it's one of those festivals that's not just a giant field. It's just, like, there are lots of little nooks and areas and stuff and people camping in bush bushland you know yeah it's crazy I, from what we've seen i haven't really even seen very much i think when you i talked to you at primavera and you said that you think you were just coming over and sort of playing that show um in particular what brings you back for ziga have you heard a lot about this festival or are you doing a few festivals now um yeah i guess so we've just been we've been doing festivals for the last Five years. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I can't even remember when Primavera was. Like, I, I get, I get, I lose track of time. I get so confused about how long it, since I've been to somewhere. But um, I guess Primavera feels like a month ago, two months ago. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah. I mean, we. I guess we just travel around doing shows. <laughs> that's that's all I know. And are you uh, uh, back in the process of writing again, or is that still something you're putting off until you can sort of get off the road for a bit? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always writing. I'm always uh, thinking about... I'm, I mean, I'm always thinking about music, but it's not necessarily for a Tame Impala album. I mean, that, that is one of the things I'm thinking about, but um, I feel like I, I, I have no, like, focus at the moment. I'm just sort of making these... Um, so I'm starting songs and like starting new ideas and whatever, but I never really finish anything. I think I'm just going to wait for a little while until uh, until I have more of a of a clear idea. At the moment, I'm just like my brain is frazzled with all that's going on, you know. So you don't even have a sort of vague deadline of when you'd want to be starting to make a make another record. No, I couldn't say. I couldn't say. Can I ask you a little bit about uh, Perth? And, you know, I think Australian bands and Southern Hemisphere bands have quite a job, probably because of the cost of travelling, to break through. Um, what happened in your case that made the journey easier? Um, I don't know. I really couldn't say. Um, having a record label, maybe. But, I mean, I guess everyone's got a record label these days, so... Um, I don't know. I mean, I've I, I've never I've never sort of witnessed anyone else's attempts to get outside of Australian shores. I mean, I know that I know that's happening more and more these days, like the internet or whatever. But um, yeah, I guess it's just people. Um, the rest of the world, I guess, is just starting to embrace Australian music more than they used to. I don't know why, but maybe. Do you get a chance whenever you do get a break to go home? Do you get a chance to check out new music? And are there any bands you'd like to recommend to us? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a band from Perth that I love. I think they're probably my favourite band in the world. They're called Electric Toad. Um, they just... Um, it's, like, it's like a singer. Our friend Steve is a singer, a drummer and a bassist. And then anywhere between 5 and 15 or 30, 17 guitarists you know like it's just whoever's whoever's like sort of friends with the guys and sort of knows the songs can can just take along a guitar and take along an amp and play along it's like because it's like garage music but but you know it's sort of like so it's simple chords so you can play along. like I, i've played a gig with them for example jay from tame impala told me the songs about an hour before we played and i just play with them and it's the most amazing thing to watch and it sounds incredible you know, I never thought 13 guitars would sound that good. Um, but every gig is just totally loose and, and amazing. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're my, my pick. 
definitely have to check them out. It sounds a bit bonkers, but fantastic. What do you miss most about uh, when about home, about Perth, about Australia when you are on tour? Because obviously it's a totally different culture. Um, I guess just the laid back pace of life. Um, um, I guess it's just, yeah, sort of wandering around our part of Perth that we live in, just sort of um, being, being like, because, you know, when we go back to Perth, we just become the, the aimless muso bums that we always were. And so when we're on tour playing a different country every day, it's like we feel so much more proactive. Even though we physically aren't doing much more than we used to, you know, we still feel like we're doing something because we're travelling so much. So, you know, we feel like we're doing a lot. Do you still have a, a bass and a studio in France? Uh, a guitarist. Uh, sorry, a drummer. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. A uh, drummer, yeah. Julian is from Toulouse, France. I think Kevin covered most of it, but take it back to the festivals. Uh, I saw you at Glastonbury this year, and it was just a huge crowd on the other stage. Um, is there a, a huge difference for you as a band when you go out to perform these big festival shows, how you vary a set to a, a theatre show? Um, I guess so. I think we just um, we just think about what's going to go down with a, with a, a flock of... Um, um, a flock of music listeners in general in a field, you know, just playing to a bunch of people rather than playing to a bunch of Tame Impala fans, you know. For us, that's just how we approach it. Um, which makes festivals um, so much more kind of free and easy because we're, we're not really trying to... We're not living up to the expectations of everyone because you know, everyone that's that's there is not necessarily there to see us. They're just there to experience the festival and there to see all the bands and stuff. So we just um, we just we just imagine we're playing to a bunch of people that, that have never heard us, and it can be really liberating. Yeah, I guess some bands see it as a challenge, don't they, to win over new fans? But if you you sound like you take it with a more relaxed approach, where you're like, we're going to do our own thing, and then just yeah, I I, I, I don't understand that whole like. Um, need to win over fans because it's like if it's going to happen it's gonna, if, if, if a festival crowd is going to love you they're going to love you and if they're going to hate you they're going to hate well not hate no one really hates anyone but you know if, if you know whatever's going to happen is going to happen there's no point in getting upset about festival audiences or, or, or thinking too much about it there's no point in overthinking it basically it's just what it is it's just a bunch of people having a good time listening to music and we as the artists are just there to entertain and that's, that's what's magical about festivals is that there's no overthinking uh, and a final sort of real cliche question uh, favourite festival to go to if you go to any and uh, favourite to play have you, have you got one? Um, there's a festival in New Zealand called Camp Aloham. I don't, I don't even know how to spell that, but basically it's just a festival put on by some guy and um, it's really small. It's just in this sort of like old abandoned school or something somewhere in New Zealand. I don't even know where it was in New Zealand, but um, there's, there are no security guards. There's no backstage. Everyone's just sort of walking around. Everyone is sort of living in, this, in the same commune. Everyone's kind of just... Um, experimenting and you know like I saw Caribou there we played there I played there with Pond actually Caribou played um, Tora et moi and it's crazy you know, there's just a stage the stage is like in the middle of the school oval and there's no backstage or normal area anything it's just it's totally it's like this, this big communist commune for like, that goes for like a few days and and there's no police or security or anything yet it's cool. It's crazy. And can you still play there now? Is there like, it's, obviously you're such a big name worldwide, but is, is that not a problem for you is, to go in and do that without security or out this? I don't know. I mean, I think the whole thing is pretty, is kept under wraps. Like it's not advertised. It's kind of just, if, you, if you're in the know, or if you know the guy or know someone that's going. Like I, I heard from word of mouth from my friends that were going. Um, I mean, not, not that it's like super exclusive or anything, but... 
I'm not even sure if they're still doing it. That's the thing. I haven't heard about it. Um, I think it's still going on, but I'm not sure who's going or anything this year. Well, now we've spoken about it, I think we've let that cat out of the bag, haven't right, we? Really, yeah, I should have given you a false name. Oh, it's called uh, the uh, Jubilee Boobly Festival. <laughs> but yeah, that, well, that's me. No, I don't know. Thank you very much. Uh, Kevin, do you want to add anything? Or um, Thank you for your time and enjoy the show tonight. Cheers. Thanks.